The new clinical research into near-death experiences is daring to suggest the impossible, that they are evidence that the mind can live on after the brain has stopped functioning. Dr. Pim van Lommel in Holland and Dr. Sam Parnier and Peter Fennick in Britain have pioneered this new research. Till now the concept was that the brain is the producer of consciousness and the producer of memories. And when you study the death experience, then you have to say, well, we have to reconsider this concept. And perhaps you should consider the brain not as a producer, but as a receiver of consciousness. And that's a kind of revolution. All three medical doctors kept hearing the same stories and wanted to investigate exactly when, during the dying process, the near-death experience occurs. Could it be happening when the brain is not functioning, when a person is clinically dead? This is a classic near-death experience occurring under extremely monitored medical conditions where every known vital sign and basically every clinical sign of life and death was being monitored at the time. And that's what makes her, her uh, case so remarkable and so valuable to us. I, I don't have an explanation for it. I don't know how it's possible for it to happen considering the physiological state she's in. At the same time, I have seen so many things that I can't explain that I don't want to be so arrogant as to be able to say uh, that there's no way it can happen. Pam's case points to the fact that somehow she was able to retain coherent perception and memory whilst clinically dead. This suggests the possibility of some kind of mind-brain separation. When the heart has stopped and the brain is not functioning, it really is not functioning. There can be no memory. It can't be remembering experiences in some way which are occurring at that time because the memory circuits don't work. So when the near-death experiencer talks about these memories of going out of their body and seeing the resuscitation process, it's difficult for our current neuroscience to understand how this could happen in using a memory system which is defined. And so one has to argue that in some way the information is retained outside the brain and then later on is fixed in memory circuits. Or you have to argue that it somehow or other occurs in the brain and goes into memory in a way we don't understand. 